Hi, welcome to Home Farm. We recently repainted a lot of our outdoor wood furniture in Sutherland Super Deck paint, and today we're gonna let you know what the results have been like. And we'll also let you know how their wood fuller performed. Three years ago, we painted this bench behind, that we're sitting on now. It's a beautiful wooden uh, Balinese bench, and we painted it in Cupronol. I think it was the Shades range. It was. And we went with a chalky white. It started to flake really quickly. Yeah. We weren't that impressed with the results. Um, this is a permanently outdoor uh, bench, so yeah. it really does take a lot of weather. So that might have been part of the, the issue, but it did start to flake really quickly. So we decided that um, actually we were going to go for something different this time. Yeah. And uh, we decided to go with the Satellin Super Deck paint. So Satellin sent us out their little leaflet with all their color um, swatches on. Um, it is important to um, know that the colors that you get in this leaflet are not representative of necessarily the color that you get out of the pot. It is not an exact match. I ordered a um, what I thought was going to be kind of a turquoisey kind of um, sagey color, and it turned up and it was a very very blue. Yeah. Um, it was a lot bluer than we had wanted, so um, we then. Went back onto the website and realized that you could actually order a RAL range. They've also got a RAL range, and obviously, RAL colors are more um, representative of you know, you go to a RAL library book and you can choose an exact color, and you're kind of guaranteed that when you order a RAL number, that is the color you're going to get. So, I matched up to a RAL color I liked, and uh, this is the color that was uh, sent yeah. to us the RAL, and it, it turned out really well. Um, I'm really pleased with the results. It's this one was painted about a month ago, so this is about a month of wear and tear. Mm. There is absolutely no cracking going on um, and no peeling. It's applied really well. The Satellin Super Deck paint, what I would say is it wasn't my favorite paint to use just because mm. it was very, very thick and gloopy. Um, so I found it to be quite um, a bit of a a bit of a extra work to kind of apply it and without having drips you really want to obviously avoid drips and when it's when it's thick and gloopy when yeah. you do get a drip you get a really big drip so it's really noticeable and especially when you know you're you're filling in a lot of detail like this you know there was a lot of I had to do a lot of stippling and I had to get a lot of my um, interior kind of um, woodwork uh, brushes out um, and really get into all the nooks and crannies and try and avoid any drips or drip marks um, so it was quite thick and gloopy. The benefit of that is that it really does give you a thick, strong coating onto the paint, uh, sorry, onto the furniture. Yeah. And I really do feel like actually the kind of, you know, when you when I opened it and started to apply it and I was like, oh gosh, this is gonna take me ages. It's so thick mm. and heavy to work with. Actually, the end results were really worth it. Yeah. It is a satin paint, so there is a little bit of a shine on it. You get a little bit of a reflection off it with the with the sunlight, but I wouldn't say it was shiny. It's not definitely not shiny. Mm -hmm. It's definitely, um, but it's definitely not matte. So if you're looking for something that's really matte and absolutely non-reflective, then this is not it. This is definitely satin, so it does have a very soft yeah. sheen. But I actually quite like that for outdoor furniture just because it's it's um, very easy to wash. It looks cleaner. Um, it does kind of bounce back a bit of the light so it doesn't absorb all the light. So it kind of makes the it makes our wood and our furniture kind of just look a little bit more alive, if you like. And it works in the setting. Yeah, it does work in the setting. So for us, it's a, it was a great finish. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that I've been really pleased with it so far. It, when it dries, um, it kind of dries down to almost like, um, I would say like, it feels like really smooth, almost like a plasticky, if you, yeah. I, I, I don't want to say plasticky and make it sound bad because it's not a bad thing, but it, it's kind of like a more of a, a plastic kind of acrylic, like a, if you've used yeah. acrylic paints, um, then it's almost like an acrylic paint. But I said to, to Mars when I was doing it, yeah. I said, what's really interesting is I've used as a, um, I did a lot of art uh, before, um, years before, and so I've done a lot of acrylic painting. And I, you know, obviously when you do get acrylic paint, you kind of kind of yeah. peel it, you can <laughs> peel it off. And I said to Mars, it's gonna be really interesting to see if this cracks really easy. Yeah. And if when it does crack, I can then put 
start to peel it off but it's not doing that at all so it's really a it is a very clever paint from the perspective that it really does seal the wood it really does give a real good protection and it is because obviously of that plasticky kind of acrylicy feel that is what's protecting your wood from so many weather elements and so much extreme weather we get quite a lot of extreme weather so for us it's really really great um, but it's just not drying down to, to crack, wanting to crack or wanting to peel. It feels really, really smooth and it feels like it's really gone kind of into the wood. I mean, it's only been on for a month, so you would expect it to have been weathering quite well. We have had warm spells, very hot spells actually. Yeah. And we've had bouts of rain. Yeah. Um, and typically with some of the other paints we've used, you can already start to see the Wearing occasional her. crack or something coming through where that hasn't happened uh, in this case yet. The next project we did was the uh, furniture that we have down at our pond deck. Um, that is just a couple of tables and chairs. And we had previously painted that a couple of years ago, again in the Cupronol yeah. um, duck's back uh -huh. in a brown color, which um, honestly I never liked. <laughs> I thought it was a dreadful color. That was just that was just on my part bad choosing um, of color. That was not the right color for that yeah. particular piece of furniture in that place. Um, I'm not sure what I was thinking that day because <laughs> I, I never would have chosen that. So I don't know what was in my head at that moment. So I was really eager to change the color of uh, that, yeah. th that furniture. Um, so I decided to go with a dark Rowl color for that. Mm -hmm. um, and again, uh, the application, that's, that furniture has got a lot of slats on it. So it's very different yeah. to this because this has obviously got a lot of carving. That one is a very kind of more more of a modern contemporary mm -hmm. um, style. So it's just slatted furniture. From the perspective of getting the paint into the in between the slats, was a little bit tedious just because the paint is so yeah. thick. So you really kind of have to get in between. It's a bit tricky. Um, but again, you know, even when I was doing it, especially I was doing because I did two coats on mm. on everything. And on the second coat, I was thinking, oh gosh, this, this is taking so long. But I would again say, as soon as it's dried, I walked away and I was like, oh, that was worth the patience. Yeah. That really was worth it because it's really feels nice again it's got a really nice smooth kind of feel to it it feels mm. tactile you want to when you sit on it you want to want to touch it because it has a really nice sm smooth feel to Finished it, it yeah. um and again it's just wearing really well and that is uh that's a teak wood is it it's teak and this is a this... mango wood oh right yeah this I is it was teak. Okay, no mango. this is mango, mango wood um mango balinese wood and then we've then got an, uh, other ones at the, at the top which are teak so yeah. it just gives you an idea of kind of because obviously your different woods will take paint differently Definitely. so it's also worth just thinking in your mind like what wood you're actually applying it to whether it's just an oak or a pine or you know because obviously they will absorb paint differently so i would just say that even though i ordered a rail color that was dark it wasn't a pitch black dark it was just on the darker yeah. scale of, of colors but because i applied it to um, furniture that I previously had this brown, which yeah. was almost like a very dark chocolate brown. Um, again, because I've applied a dark Rowl color to a dark chocolate brown, it actually mm. almost kind of pushed it into yeah. that kind of black midnight. So it is darker than I had originally wanted, but yeah. actually I'm really happy with the results and I'm, I like the color. That looks good. Our third and final project was our Balinese bench that we've got in the back courtyard. Uh, that is probably the oldest uh, outdoor furniture that we've got. Uh, we were just trying to figure it out. I think it's about 17 or 18 years old. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, it's weathered well, but because it's, uh, it is outdoors, uh, it has warped in a, in a few places, it has cracked in a few places. Uh, and over the years, we've used different sealants to try and patch those, uh, those gaps up. Fillers. Or, uh, sorry, fillers. Yeah. Uh, and they don't always seem to, to work that great. No. Uh, so this year, we have tried this, uh, this wood filler from Sadalin. It's basically a two-part uh, filler, which means that you take the actual filler in, inside the, the actual can. Yeah. And you apply a hardener to that. Uh, you have to mix it through so there's a little bit of preparation work with regards to that it's quite easy though for you i mean you did it really quickly yeah i mean yeah it's, it's, i mean it's just you mixing do have to, you do have to mix it and you just have to make sure that it actually you mix it through properly as opposed to just you know oh, swirling true. it around a little bit you, you want to make sure that the hardener actually mixes through the actual filler yeah true uh, and it's got that slightly acetone type smell to it and and when it sets 
it sets rock hard. Yeah, it sets like concrete. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it, and it applies like um, a, a really thick paste, yeah. and it dries quite. Well, you want to work quite quickly because you'll be surprised. You'll you'll oh, it, it hardens fast. It'll lure you yeah. into a false sense of security because you start to work with it and you think, oh, it's 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 still it's still staying quite pliable. So you kind of start to slow down and take your time, and then suddenly, as soon as it starts to cure, it cures boom like yeah. that so as soon as you start to think oh no it's kind of drying out you you're running, yeah. running out of time uh -huh. in a hurry um, I would also just say that in a couple of instances I've actually found that applying more um, is better and then sanding it down uh, okay. so for example you know don't apply um, it not don't apply less and then think okay I'll come back because you will have to come back mm. and do a, another application it's almost kind of treated almost like a polyfiller in the fact that you would yeah. apply a little bit more and have it kind of maybe even a little bit rough above the surface like that and it sanded beautifully oh, really quickly I think I used a grit of like um was it 60 or 80 so just maybe just be careful with you know what kind of uh, grit just go fine yeah just start just start off and kind of work your way gradually yeah. or just do a little sample patch maybe underneath the bench or something like that where you, you know if you it doesn't really mm. it's not really visible i really like it it's by far the best yeah. wood filler that we've ever used i agree so i am very confident that this is yeah. not going to crack i will be really surprised if it does crack mm -hmm. even a year two years three years five years from now, I will be very surprised Opening if it cracks. I think it's going to be lasting a long time. And honestly, um, if we're going to be doing any wood filler jobs around windows, doors, um, ex we're going to use this. Yeah. Um, exterior furniture. I'm just going to go straight for this and use this yeah. because I think it's, it, I think it's an absolute winner. It is in white. Um, I can't remember if you can get other colors, um, just check on their website. Um, but, uh, the white did take the paint very, very well. Yeah. There was no feedback or, or, or anything coming through. It wasn't white coming through when, once yeah. I painted it, it took the paint really nicely. Mm -hmm. And apparently it does take stains. Uh, it does take stains. It says here that it might require two to three applications to, to actually cover that. Okay. Um, we haven't tried it, so I, I can't really comment on that too much. Um, but I can say that if you're going to be painting yeah. something, especially if you're, you know, doing something like a project, like a shed or, you know, I know they've got loads of pictures of beach huts and things yeah. like that. But, you know, if you're going to be painting something in a color, I can say to you from our experience, the wood filler works. It does a really good job yeah. and it does take the paint really nicely. Mm -hmm. So, um, you yeah, know, you can be confident with that. Yeah, we painted the back bench in black. It was in a natural color uh, for many, many years. Yeah. Um, and then we, we moved to this property and we just wanted it to kind of be more of a statement piece. Yeah. And in the place that it is, we feel like we want it black, a nice mm -hmm. And a contrast white. really nicely against the it oak uh, raised beds that we've got. Yeah. It looks good. Yeah. And, and it's really just smart and easy for us. It works really well for us. And mm -hmm. again, I've just been really pleased with, you know, the, the application um, went on and it's just doing what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah. I think I like paints that just you know, do what they're supposed to do, you know? <laughs> You'd think all paints would be like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I but, don't... But sadly, they're not. They're not. They're really not. And I also think that um, what's notable is that obviously this is outdoor furniture, so you kind of do get, you know, maybe a little bit of mud or a little bit yeah. of, you know, um, nature's, you know... <laughs> <laughs> from, from our avian friends. <laughs> So you do can get get a, little, a few dirty marks here and there. And what I would say is a couple of times I have just brought a bucket of soapy water down and it's washed beautifully. Oh, it's washed out really well. Um, nothing's kind of got into the paint. It's it's just all, all stayed surface. So it's washed off really easily mm -hmm. and it has not degraded the paint at all. Interesting. Um, so from that perspective, I've been really pleased with how nicely it washes. Um, and obviously, you know, I, I just think overall it's been That's definitely nice. one of the better paints we've we've tried on exterior wood the only thing i would say is um <laughs> the name is super deck <laughs> it's not for decking yeah that's um, a good point actually. and it actually does say that on the back of the tin it says not suitable for decking <laughs> so, so um i do think that that could be a little bit misleading especially if you were just to walk into a shop and mm. kind of just kind of go down an aisle and go oh super deck that's got to be for decking and just kind of grab it um yeah it's not okay. um so just be aware of that but um it does apply to multi-surfaces so it says it, it's good for exterior wood weathered plastic 
oh. metal, concrete, brick, stone, PVC, oh. and plaster sole. So it goes on to quite a lot of different um, materials okay. and, and surfaces. We've only tried it on wood, so we can only speak for wood. Um, but it, it seems like it would um, work in quite a number of That's different uh, applications. But I think it's a very, very clever paint. And um, it is also water-based. Uh, we just washed out our yeah. brushes with water and that was it was very easy. Um, the only thing I would say is because it is a thick paint um your brushes do dry out really quick and then it's really difficult to wash them out so what i would just say is if you're going to use this um i would just recommend keeping a little tray of water next to you and then if you kind of get up mid job and walk in to have a cup of tea or walk away to answer a mobile phone call or something like that just drop your brush straight into your tray of water and just leave it like that and then come back and then reuse your brush because if you leave it i think even for five or ten minutes yeah. you're going to come back and have a really wow. crusty brush to deal with so that would kind of be my top tip with okay. regards to that. Uh, we're going to be doing probably a regular update. When I say regular, maybe in a six months time, we'll do an update on our blog. Uh, so, you know, if you want to see how the actual paints are performing over time, yeah. uh, we are going to be providing regular updates there because I think that is the biggest part of any review is, you know, application initially and then how long it actually lasts. So I think in general, um, we've been really impressed with Saddle and products. We also use some um, varnishes and stains. We did three years ago. We did a lot of our other outdoor furniture with that, that we wanted to have a more natural uh, finish to. Yeah. Uh, all of those are still, the coverage is fantastic. There's, it is. There's, there's no visible signs of peeling or cracking. Nope. Uh, they're in good nick. Yeah. Uh, which is what, which is why we wanted to, you know, try out their actual paints because if their varnishes were good, we just thought that uh, the, the paints would provide equally good protection. Yeah, and it has. And it has. And they so have. Far. Yeah, and uh, so I would just, you know, it, it depends on what what you kind of what look you're going for. So if yeah. you want something that's kind of like a natural wood effect and you just want to change the color of the wood yeah. then you are looking at your stains and your varnishes um, and then if you want something that's an actual color block yeah. you know not see through at all but you want to actually actually just get a color mm -hmm. then i would definitely look at the super deck range mm -hmm. so we hope you found this video useful and interesting if you did please subscribe and ring the bell thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video thank you bye bye